I'm Saraya Tyler. Welcome back to City Journal. Today we're here with Mayor Scherzer, and he's going to talk us up a little bit today. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, to start out, can you just tell us about the State of the City Address? Yeah, so every year the mayor, its tradition, gives the State of the City. It's comparable maybe to what most people are familiar with. Uh, the President of the United States at the beginning of each year gives an address to Congress. We refer to it as the State of the Union. Uh, even the governor of the state of Ohio does what they call a state of the state address to the state legislature. And as mayor, I give the state of the city to city council. I traditionally do that on the last Monday of January. And then after I do that, I, I go out and talk about it on media like Harding Telecom. And um, uh, I get invited to some uh, civic organizations uh, in the Marion community to talk uh, about the state of the city. Some of the highlights of this year's state of the city were, were the uh, $600,000 grant from the Federal Aviation Administration uh, that we're using to build the new airport terminal. And we've talked about this before, but just to let you know, the airport terminal is ahead of schedule. It's under construction right now. And we have to hope to have it opened up uh, by late summer. We'll do an official ribbon cutting of the new terminal during wings and wheels at the Mary Municipal Airport in September of this year. So uh, the next grant that we got was a $400,000 state capital grant, which we are gonna focus on Lincoln Stadium in Lincoln Park. Some of you may know that the Lincoln Stadium was built during the Great Depression of the 1930s. It was a public works project, and uh, we applied for a state uh, capital grant about a year and a half ago and were awarded $400,000. Now, this grant will focus on the stadium specifically and not necessarily the baseball field at Lincoln Field there. So the stadium, uh, it, it has a lean-to that was built on the back of it in the early 1970s where the Parks Department has housed a lot of their equipment. It wasn't originally designed to be there, and it's really become kind of an eyesore covering up that grand stadium that was built in the 1930s. That will be removed this spring as we start the renovation process of the Lincoln Field. And also there is the $30 million upgrade that we're doing to the wastewater treatment plant. Now $30 million is a great deal of money, but this is going to help keep us compliant with the Ohio EPA rules and regulations. We have what we call a long-term control plan, which permits us to run the wastewater treatment plant. And so this $30 million project is underway right now as we speak. Also, the city spent about $3.3 million in other smaller infrastructure projects. Sewer replacement projects last year, which we always talk about the sewer replacement projects that we do uh, right here on, on this show every year. And we have a couple of them uh, teed up to do this year as well that I'll get into later on in the shows this year. Also, we spent uh, that $3.3 million on street resurfacing. We're really starting to get into a good position with our street resurfacing. With the new gasoline tax that went into effect last year, we anticipate higher revenues in the years to come in maintaining our city streets. And we also mentioned in the state of the city address the $500,000 critical infrastructure grant for our fire station downtown on Prospect Street. This is a 100-year-old-plus fire station, and the taxpayers have gotten more than their money's worth out of it. That's why we're actually planning to do a new fire station in the very near future. But in the meantime, this $500,000 grant will be used on the facade of the building, heating and cooling, roof, and to shore up and support the floor because the fire apparatus that we use today is a lot heavier than what they used in the 1900s, early 1900s, when it was horse-drawn fire apparatus. In addition to that, the fire department also received a federal SAFER grant where we'll be hiring six net new firefighters, and that'll bring our firefighting staffing up into about 61 to 63 firefighters. We haven't been that high since before the Great Recession of the 21st century. And in the police department, we're applying for a COPS grant. 
Now this COPS grant, if we're successful in getting it, both the SAFER grant and the COPS grant are federally competitive grants. But we had a vote, think a really had, we have a really good chance of getting this COPS grant. We're going to focus these three new police officers on violent juvenile crimes. We're actually seeing the crime rates in our community drop, but we're seeing an increase in violent juvenile crimes. And violent juveniles become violent adults. So we're going to work with the Marion City Schools. We're going to work with family court and juvenile court to address this situation before it gets worse down the road. And those, Soraya, are just some of the highlights in this year's State of the City. So you can see last year where we got awarded the grants, we planned on these projects and we're executing a lot of these projects this year with this grant money. We're going to go on a break and stay tuned for City Journal. The Historic OK Cafe. Pizza, calzones, subs, sandwiches, and more. Our fresh dough is made daily, topped with your favorite ingredients and made to order. Stop in for our lunch buffet or check out our many daily specials. Looking for something to do? Come in and check out our giant projector screen on game days. Sing with friends on karaoke nights and dance the night away with live entertainment from your favorite local bands. So even though Rex might have a short reach, we'll never come up short on service. So remember, when you're hungry, check out the OK Cafe, home of the giant 20-inch Pizzasaurus Rex made to order. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. Come to the historic OK Cafe, located at 734 East Center Street, Marion made for over 80 years. I'm Saray and we're back from break and we're here with Mayor Schertzer. Now, um, can you tell us a little bit about like the city jobs and what's going on with that? Sure, every month we like to cover the positions that are opened in city government. Uh, these are important positions that we need to fill from time to time. If you're interested in any city job that we talk about here on City Journal today, you can always look on the website at www dot marionohio dot us and it has all these jobs posted on there the first job that we want to talk about is a labor two in the sanitation department so you would be working on the pack of us uh, in the back of a sanitation truck picking up the trash every morning so this is not an easy job it's a labor intensive job so you need to be in good physical condition and we also require that you have a commercial driver's license class b because driving those packers around our city streets can be challenging sometimes that's why you need the class b cdl driver's license you can apply for that job anytime we're taking applications through march the 4th at noon and you can either do that online or you can come to city hall the third floor for any of these jobs that we're talking about today and ask for amy o'connor she's our hr clerk and you'll see the hr office uh, as soon as you get off the uh, elevator on the third floor you make a quick left and then that's the first door on your right so that's the first job we're also accepting applications for the aquatic center pool manager now this would be the person that manages everything that goes on in the pool. We'll accept applications for lifeguards and front desk and concession stand as well, but we'll focus on the pool manager right now. <clears throat> we need somebody who's available basically from mid-May till Labor Day at the end of summer. We open Memorial Day <clears throat> and we go to Labor Day. And that pool manager is the person that sets the schedule, make sure all the concessions are ordered, make sure the pool's clean and in working order. Uh, the last position that we have available right now is a part-time bus driver. And again, we're almost always looking for part-time bus drivers. 
<clears throat> you also need a commercial driver's license to be a part-time bus driver. Now, some of our drivers don't require a CDL certification, but the positions that we're looking for right now require a commercial driver's license. So those are just some of the jobs that are available in your city government right now. Of course, the job market's pretty tight out there. The unemployment rate is still uh, hovering around 4% or just below 4%. That's the best that we've seen in 50 years in the Marion community. So there are still plenty of jobs out there. Anybody looking for a job, you can come to the city and apply for these if you have the qualifications to do so. Great. Um, can you elaborate further on like the city planning and the BZA? And sure. So here's a situation where the mayor makes appointments to about 20 boards and commissions. That's about 88 people that I have to find to serve on the various boards and commissions that the city has. Now, sometimes it's challenging to find the right individual who wants to volunteer their time to serve on these boards and commissions because they're not paid, they're voluntary, but they still serve a vital purpose to the operations of the city. Now, speaking specifically of city planning, city planning is a six-year appointment by the mayor, and it is responsible for a lot of things that go on as far as planning for the city. And uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals is a three-year appointment. So when we took a look at these two committees, we quickly recognized that there's a lot of overlapping authority. And when the, the clerk of city council really dug into it and did the research, we found that it wasn't legally necessary for us to have a Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm down to three members on the Board of Zoning of Appeals out of seven, and we thought this would be a good time to make the transition to merge the two. So what we'll do is we'll take city planning, we'll expand the board from seven to nine members, we'll pull two of the three remaining board members off of the Board of Zoning Appeals and add them to city planning, and then they will assume the duties and responsibilities of the former Board of Zoning Appeals. Now, why do all this? What happens when a business comes to town or a business is expanding, they often have to come to city council, go to regional planning, go to city planning, go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. So by eliminating one of those steps, my hope is it'll make this more business friendly for those companies that need to come to town, want to come to town, and want to do an expansion. So this is a great time to do it. I asked city council earlier this week to consider this. They asked myself and the city law director to craft the legislation that actually would abolish the Board of Zoning Appeals and increase the size and duties and responsibilities of city planning. It does need city council's approval in order to abolish one and expand the duties of the other. So it is my hope that we can be more business friendly by eliminating one of the steps that a business might have to go through when they come to the Marion community. Cool. My hope is your hope. Um, we're going to go on a break and make sure to stay tuned for City Journal. Back with City Journal, I'm Saray, and we're here with Mayor Scherzer, and he's going to tell us a little bit about safe routes to school, and can you like elaborate on all that? Sure. Well, let me ask you a question. What elementary okay. school did you go to? Taft Elementary. You went to Taft Elementary. Now, yep. it's not Taft Elementary. Where, where is Taft Elementary? 
in Fair Park. It's in Fair Park. So it's the old Fair Park. So mm -hmm. some of the viewers may not be familiar, even though it's been almost 20 years, mm -hmm. of the new names of all the elementary schools. And so you went to Taft Elementary in Fair Park. Yep. You went to Grant Middle School. Yep. And when you were either dropped off or picked up from school or walked or rode your bike, mm -hmm. what were the main concerns that you had as a student? Oh my gosh, it was like so congested and like there was like too much going on and all the cars, like I remember my brothers and I, we would always have to like watch everywhere yep. because we didn't know if, if one of us stepped off the sidewalk and you could like hit or whatever, but um and just a lot going on overall, just like with the congestion and yeah. And that's exactly right. And that's what safe routes to school is supposed to help the city with. That's why we're partnering with Marion Public Health and the Marion City Schools to apply for an Ohio Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School study, specifically geared to the elementaries and the middle school. It would be a two mile radius around every elementary and the middle school. And once the study has taken place, it will help the city and the schools determine what investments need to be made when it comes to infrastructure improvements to make those issues a little bit easier and to make it easier for parents to drop off and pick up and also to encourage more students to ride their bikes and walk to school. Now let me give you an example. About five or six years ago, the city did this study around Taft Elementary School. We applied for a safe routes to school. We were awarded that grant and we made infrastructure improvements to sidewalks, crosswalks. We put a walking bridge over the ditch that runs kind of behind and beside Taft Elementary School to make it easier for kids in one part of Fair Park to walk over that walking bridge right into the front door of the uh, Taft Elementary School. So that's the whole idea behind Safe Routes to School, to make it safer and more efficient for kids to get to and from school when they're being dropped off and picked up. And these grants will be very helpful with the study. The study comes first. We hope that we'll get awarded that study and be able to execute that study sometime in 2021. Then through that study, we'll apply for more grant dollars through Safe Routes to School that will help pay for the infrastructure improvements that I mentioned. Now remember, we're talking two miles around each of the schools. That almost encompasses the entire city. If you look at Benjamin Harrison and Grant Middle School and you draw a circle, a two mile radius around them, that takes in a lot of neighborhoods over there. And because these schools are in the middle of residential neighborhoods, this is where people live. They have to be able to get to and from their homes at the same time that school is starting and school is letting out. So we saw great success with the safe routes to school with Taft Elementary School and we're hopeful that we'll have the same level of success around our other elementary schools and Grant Middle School with this particular grant. Now, do you think that that'll help some of the problems that you remember? I think it will, and now since I have like a niece and nephew, I drop them off and I pick them up, and when they get older, I'm sure they're gonna wanna like walk and ride bikes yep. and do all that, so I hope that your hope becomes true because that's my hope. <laughs> um, now we were talking earlier about you know the history of Mary and all that, and you told me a fun fact about today. <laughs> Can you elaborate on that? Well, it's not just today; it's every day this year. This is mm -hmm. the 200th anniversary or the bicentennial of Marion County. So in 1822, we officially became a political subdivision of the state of Ohio, and Marion County was born. And because it's the 200th anniversary of our county, the city also wants to participate in the bicentennial celebrations. So it's important that we understand our history. We gotta know where we came from to know where we're going. We have to understand the mistakes that were made in the past from our history so we don't repeat those same mistakes in the future. That's why the bicentennial is so important. It instills pride in the community to know the history of where you come from and how we came to be Marion County. Now here's another interesting fact. 
Uh, the Bicentennial Commission is led by Randy Winlan, mm -hmm. who is actually a retired city school teacher. Really? And he works uh, with the Marion County Historical Society. There are all kinds of events going on this year because of the Bicentennial Celebration. And there are also other celebrations taking place. Did you know that it has been 100 years since women have earned the right to vote in a presidential election? So in 1920 was the first presidential election that women were allowed to vote in. So women's suffrage is pretty mm -hmm. important. And that first campaign that women voted in was for President Harding, who was from Marion. And this is a hundred year anniversary of the Harding's front porch campaigns that he levied and waged right here in Marion County. And that's why it's important because we're doing the library and museum for Harding that will open up later this year. So we've got all these celebrations taking place. The new museum will be opening up. And uh, in two years, it's the city's bicentennial. So the county is 200 years old and the city is only 198 years old. But fun fact, 50 years ago, when they celebrated the county's 50, 150th anniversary, they celebrated it on the wrong year. They celebrated it on the city's 150th anniversary. So here we are today looking back in time and we noticed that they celebrated it in the wrong year. So 50 years or 100 years from now, we wanted to make sure that when they look back to today, that the counties was celebrated in the right year of 2020 and the cities was celebrated in the correct year of 2022. So it's important to celebrate the history of your hometown and your home county. Very important. Well, thank you for tuning in to City Journal and we'll be back next time.